I don't feel evil. I know I didn't do the right thing. No, I mean, it sounds horrible. It really does. But I, I didn't know what to do. Was she Me. starting to get stinky and... I'll be honest with you, I didn't even open the check. This is Byron Booten, a drug-addicted military veteran and one of the two people who know exactly what happened to 18-year-old Deanna Styers. Deanna would go missing right on Christmas Eve, and as this mysterious abduction is investigated, dark secrets come to light as any hopes of her being found alive get dimmer and dimmer. Pulls your gun out of her back pocket and beats this girl in the head with it, and now all of a sudden, that's your gun that just beat this. You're not concerned about that? You're not like, holy crap, girl, what are you doing? Yeah, I was. I would be absolutely wet in my pants. I was. In the morning hours of January 18th, 2014, two hunters left their homes to look for game in Levy County, Florida. With abundant wildlife and dense marshlands, this was bound to be another successful hunt. Hours passed, and by noon, they found something, but it wasn't an animal. They had just found a human body. We had our police radio running, and we heard the call that human remains had been discovered. This was, without a doubt, Deanna Styers, and her body was in a state so deplorable that this could never have been an accident. The right arm is exposed and it's skeletonized. I never had to go through anything so painful. And knowing that she's not coming back. This footage has been given exclusively to Dark Loom Interrogations by the Citrus County Sheriff's Office. Viewer discretion is advised. Deanna Styers was born in Hernando County, Florida in 1995 and faced a rough childhood early on. Soon after her birth, her parents divorced and she lived with her grandfather for a short time before he passed away from a deadly heart attack. This changed Deanna as the child inside her died and she strayed down a dark path. Partying, drugs, and alcohol were her escape and no one could save her. However, all of this would change right before Christmas. Well, according to this sheriff's office report, this incident happened during the holidays, but there was no Merry Christmas or Happy New Year for this teenager. Over years of partying, Deanna developed a dangerous habit of frequently using drugs. However, on her 18th birthday, on December 23rd, 2012, she wanted a kick that she'd never forget. This was when she met a couple at a local bar, 41-year-old Byron Booten and his wife, 35-year-old Crystal Brinson who invited Deanna to take heavy drugs. Besides a few felonies, the couple's record was clean. Byron was a war vet, and Crystal was a lovable woman who had built an outstanding reputation as a model her entire life. Deanna decided they were trustworthy enough, and the couple soon convinced Deanna to accompany them to their home. This would be the last that anyone ever heard of Deanna, and a month later, her remains were found pumped full of morphine and in a condition so horrifying that the corpse had become almost unidentifiable. When we walk into the scene, we see what are obvious human remains wrapped in a black cloth. Animals were feeding on the remains. The right arm is exposed and it's skeletonized, and part of the upper torso is exposed uh, from under this, this wrapping, and it's also skeletonized. The rest of the remains was covered with this black cloth. Considering the body was nearly a month old, getting a lead would take too much time and possibly give the murderer time to slip away. However, officers had a stroke of luck when a witness, Kevin Shields, came forward. Kevin was present when the couple and Deanna returned from the party, and fortunately, he had witnessed Byron with the body just days after. What had happened on the night of December 23rd that caused the brutal murder of Deanna Styers? Why was Deanna's body found filled with morphine and heavy drugs? And most importantly, what drove this seemingly ordinary couple to the homicide of an 18-year-old girl? These questions would only be answered after Byron was taken into custody and interviewed. Let's start back. We know that the part about where Kevin and Deanna get into their little thing and they're at Cooter's place. And she calls you on the phone. She ends up talking to Crystal, I think, yeah and ask for you guys help to help pick her up. Yeah, to come pick her up. She didn't want to be around Kevin anymore. Now, what day is that? This is the 24th of December. Okay. Christmas Eve day. Do you know about what time that is? When she calls you guys? Or when you get there? Um, we get there maybe 
hour and a half before sunrise. Okay. So I think sunrise used to be at about seven, so probably about five in the morning. Five in the morning. Yeah, maybe it would have been four, somewhere around that time. Okay. Where do you pick up from? From Cooter stuff. Okay. Where are you guys at when she calls you? I think, I don't remember exactly, but I think we were at Mama CJ's. I believe we were. But I really don't remember. So it doesn't take long. Yeah, right? yeah, we were over there because it was really close to where we were. Right. So the main reason why I agreed to it. And by this time, she'd spent how long with with uh, with Kevin? Kevin? I, I don't know exactly. I believe at least a day. Okay. It's a whole yeah. day prior to her. Yeah, I've heard rumors of one day, and I've heard rumors of two days, but I don't. You know exactly. I thought it was a day. Did you see when Kevin picked her up? No. Did you hear as to when he picked her up? No. No, I said I thought the mom had said a day, and then I thought Kevin had said two days. So I really don't know for sure. All right. Do you know how that went down? Um, from what I heard after that. He talked her into going up to the store and then just didn't bring her back. That was the story that I got because she didn't want to go with him. He said, oh, come on, you know, just go up to the store. And then just didn't bring her back. Okay. When you show up... I can't confirm that or anything, but that's what I heard. Right. While this alibi might seem confusing, one of Byron's arrest affidavits can help explain what happened to Deanna over the course of three days, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of December. On the evening of December 23rd, 2012, Deanna initially met Byron and his apparent partner, Crystal. From that point onwards, Deanna went to their home, where the three would party and take drugs throughout Deanna's three-day stay at their home. But there was someone she met during this night who would be instrumental in uncovering the truth, Kevin Shields the same man who reported Deanna's death. The next day, on December 24th, Kevin was interested in buying a motor for his boat, and Deanna accompanied him to a residence some distance away from Byron's house to buy one. This is why Byron has constantly mentioned a boat motor in this interview. By this point, Deanna's drug addiction was growing, and she resorted to stealing methamphetamine from both Kevin and the couple, an event that would change everything. The following two days, the 25th and 26th of December, were the last that Deanna was seen alive. Presumably, the murder was linked to the meth conflict between the couple and Deanna. However, the exact date and circumstances are still something detectives need to get out of Byron. When you show up at Cooters, what's going on there? Uh, Cooters working on a boat trailer, and Deanna's in like the tool shed thing. And Kevin was just kind of wandering around. And so we smoked a bowl. And then, you know, I was trying to get the show on the road. You know, if we're going to go, let's you know, we go. And then Deanna was in the shed just looking around, like moving everything, like she's looking for something. I'm like, you know, well, what the hell's going on here? And Kevin said, you know, I'm, you know, I'm missing my dope and I handed it to her and she never left the shed, so, you know, pretty much uh, she's got the dope. So, I was like, you know. How much of it was, how much dope was there? No, it wasn't much. It's was like a half gram or something. But it was just like the last of the dope. Right. That he had had, so. And then, you um, know, up. Crystal got involved and told Kevin that she would get the dope back for him. You know, just just relax and stay on her and she'd get it back for him. And she did end up getting it back for him from Deanna. And she told Kevin just to drop the situation, leave her guy, forget about it, call it down and over with. And we left with, uh, me, Crystal, and Deanna left. Where'd you guys go from there? Here we went to the McDonald's in Brooksville to grab something for breakfast. 
and then up to my house. Okay. So this is yeah. still Christmas Eve though, right? Yeah, Christmas Eve morning. Mm -hmm. You know, because we were at McDonald's and it was light then, or just turning light. <clears throat> and then I go back to my house where I proceed to go directly to bed and take some cold pills and lay down. And Crystal and Deanna were doing girl stuff, playing on the computer and stuff. And then Crystal would come in every now and again and tell me that, you know, it's okay to have just one guy come over and this and that. And I was just saying, whatever happens, you know, that pure thing, as long as it doesn't enter into this room, you know, trust you with your business. Just take care of your business. I say you're left alone and drag it over with steam cold that I got. So did well, she tell you why she was bringing this guy over? Just something about setting him up for some future money making thing. I knew it was of some type of sexual type deal. You know, whether he was gonna get any or not, but that was the nature of it all. From these events, it is evident that the two were involved heavily in a deeper drug community, and dope was their lifeline. Not only that, but Crystal most likely had sexual encounters with dealers, as Byron mentions, to obtain as many drugs as she could. This time around, she got her hands on morphine from the individual that Byron just mentioned. Considering these patterns of addiction, it is clear that the value these drugs had for Byron and especially Crystal was beyond reason. Unfortunately, Deanna was just as addicted, if not more. Consequently, things began to go wrong on the evening of December 25th. Byron and Crystal had left Deanna alone at the residence, and when they came back, all hell broke loose. What was happened? What had happened to the house while you were gone? Um, everything had been upended besides like the TV and stuff like that. Like anything like a bag of clothes had been tipped over gone through, even clothes taken off the top shelf of the closet, scattered everywhere, any box that had anything in it had been tipped over or gone through. Mm -hmm. And not that I really noticed anything missing, or it just seemed like it all went completely gone through. For what reason, I don't know. Not that there was anything less to take because I got robbed out of the jail. So I really wasn't concerned about stuff missing because I really didn't have anything left after that. Right. But the place was nice and straightened up before that. I mean, everything was where it goes. And everything was completely like a freaking clothing bomb went off in the damn house. Right. So what happened from there when? What did you, what did you guys try to do? Um, I think to ask her, you know, what, what, the hell, like what the hell went on? And she pointed at some clothes and tried to say that those were Rusty's clothes. And you know, I had to have stolen them from Rusty. And Rusty is one of Deanna's friends. And due to an extremely high dose of methamphetamine, Deanna had a breakdown over the fact that she stole Rusty's clothes. You know, she needs to give them back to Rusty. I'm just gonna tell you because it's impossible, you know, I mean, I can, I'm friends with Rusty whether you know it or not, and I can call him and I'll come up here and tell you it doesn't want to just hide clothes. And from there, she was pretty much, like, not able to be talked to. Like, things just weren't getting to her or from her. And she just hung out in that end room. And then mom and buddy showed up. So I gave them a quick tour of the place and was trying to find um, the bowl and stuff to burn a bowl with them because they just come back from a cow. And I couldn't find that. I searched and searched for it except in the end room. So I told her to listen, I searched the whole place. I double checked myself. I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't, I wasn't sure of it. But it's got to be in the back room, which only Deanna has been. So you, you need to go talk to her and get this shit straightened out. You're talking to Mama CJ? Yeah. So she goes back there, 
But Charlie's talking to her and she can't get through to her either. She's telling her to, to close her Rusties and Mom is showing her that this and those are not Rusties. Byron knows Rusty. You know, it's, it's all impossible. And... While Byron and Crystal managed to calm her down, they soon realized that some of their methamphetamine and a pipe full of meth were missing, likely stolen by Deanna during her intoxicated rampage of the house. I didn't take anything, this and that. And I looked under the bed and there was um, like her purse and wallet thing. So I opened that up and then the last of the dope was right there in the little wallet thing. <laughs> so I handed that to Mama and said, you know, it wasn't, you know, in there before, obviously. And we didn't you know, give it to her to hold on to. And she you know, was just crying, denying everything and stuff. While the remaining meth was found, the pipe is still missing. Given that this is the last of their drugs, it wouldn't take long before Crystal begins confronting Deanna about the pipe's whereabouts. I guess Crystal was trying to get out of her what the hell happened and where the hell is the tube and what the f is going on. What's Crystal's mental status? I mean, how's she, how's she acting? Kind of not really believing what the hell is going on, really? Just the way I was and just the way Mama was. I like how did this get to this? You know, in the time that we just went from there to Cardinal, restaurant got a picture frame and came back. Well, no, what, what, are you, what are you referring to? What's happening during that time that, that you guys... The end went off a rocker and flipped the house over. Okay. While we were away. When so, she's when Deanna's talking to you guys, is she other than making irrational statements, is she yelling, screaming, acting? Oh, just crying, saying just stuff is rusty. That that's all that I got out of her. That's really it. And I basically just stopped talking to her. Just started looking for the stuff. Right. And, and what's Crystal during doing during that time though, to calm her down? She had to have been talking to her or, or something. I didn't get loud to her. It got into my brain to where I heard it. You know, and there wasn't any commotion going on. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't notice anything, you know, to disrupt me from my searching through everything. So I'm guessing she's just keeping her company, trying to get out where you know, where the tube went while well, I'm looking for it because Deanna kept thinking everything in the house is rusty and wouldn't tell us anything else. They don't know, we had just found the dope, but, you know, in her little billfold thing, you know, right there in front of her. I mean, how, you know, even when you catch a thief with something right in front of them, how can they deny it? Yeah. Right. But so, she was still denying it, and I was just, you know, we're, we're, we need to find the rest. Because I can't have shit somewhere that nobody knows where. Wait, I need to know where everything is. When Mama CJ leaves, right? With when, Buddy. With Buddy. During that time, you're still looking for the ball, correct? Yeah. And at that hours. time, Deanna is still acting up. I really did, don't know if she's acting I mean, she's not telling well, what's Crystal where the ball was. Okay. Like her and Crystal weren't getting like loud or anything. Okay. You know, I mean, it wasn't like that. They we were being civil. I don't know if there was any communication going on that anybody understood, but but it wasn't like out of control or nothing like that. Okay. But I mean, I don't know what was going on honestly, but it didn't make me take notice whatever was going on. I was pretty focused on what I was doing because that damn thing had to be there. It had to be there somewhere. So what happens after that? After that, after I searched that room, then the bathroom, then the living room, then the kitchen, then my bedroom, then my bathroom, then the kitchen cupboards again, and then underneath that, or he said it's, it's, you know, time to go. We got it. I don't know where the hell it is, but. I'm not finding it. It's, I gotta stop looking, it's time to go. 
So we go to leave and take her back down to Brussels. And then she starts getting nutty by the door, mm -hmm. starting to freak out. And it's, you know, her and Crystal on the way out there. And Gina was in front. And then when she started like freaking, like not wanting to go, you know, Crystal hit her like a bunch of times, like really fast. Where? When, like right around this area somewhere. In the back of the head? Yeah, like the neck or mm -hmm. somewhere in that range. <clears throat> did you notice if Crystal had anything in her hand at all? I don't believe she did. What does Deanna do after Crystal starts beating her in the back of the head? Yeah, you know, she ended up, um, they both ended up on the floor there by the door. And then Crystal was telling her, you know, calm down, calm down. And I'm, I had to go over there and be like, listen, all we're, all we're doing is getting in the car and going down there and taking over to Mama's, which is where I met you. So, you know, that's where you're going. And from there, you know, you're on your own or, or whatever. All I know is, you know, that's where we're taking you. You're not staying here anymore, obviously. So that's where you're going. And eventually she ended up calming down in like a, like a nodding way. Right. When Deanna's body was found, police discovered blunt force trauma to the back of her head. But surprisingly, this was not the cause of death. The actual cause of death was determined to be acute drug toxicity. According to autopsy reports, the levels of morphine in Deanna's blood were so high that it was impossible to chalk it down to an accident. Even disregarding this for a moment, the injuries on the back of her head were determined to be caused by pistol whipping, or at least by a blunt weapon. So why has Byron blatantly lied about Crystal not having anything in her hand? This is most likely because he was a convicted felon and was not allowed to own a firearm by the court. If he admits that he was in possession of one at his home, it would spell even more trouble for him. Why do you think that is, though? Thinking back on it, it's... It had to be from, from those pills, it had to be. Because she was off the wall one minute, and then the next minute, she was like, snoring. I mean, snoring. Right. Now, which pills are you referring to? The, the guy from Capital Towers who brought up and traded Crystal for dope. How much of those pills did she take? I have no idea. That's okay. what I don't know how many there were at the beginning, how many she took, how many, I have no idea. But that was all supposed to be Crystal's money making thing. She had just come in and woke me up and asked me for, for a joke to trade to the air because it was a good pill thing. She gave her the pills and I said, here, here's the dope. Let's just leave me the hell alone and do whatever the hell you're gonna do. <clears throat> now, I, I never saw what her dope or the pills after that. Right, but I know I know, Crystal told you that she gave her morphine pills to calm her down, but did she ever say how much? No. No, that she didn't. No. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know what one would do or what 50 right. would do. No. And I don't know if Crystal right. even knew. Right. right, but she did tell you that she gave her the morphine pills to calm her down, though. Right? Yeah, later on she did. Okay. Okay. Which I kind of thought that was a little bit wrong to do if you right. was supposed to be making, you know, my money back on that, you know, why right. are you giving, I, I could understand how it was needed, right. but I think she gave her the pills before that. Before what? You know, as soon as I started searching the other room, right. I think she gave her some pills. All right, so she gave her some pills, she goes crazy, and then well, she Well, she was crazy before. The, but she gives her more pills, though. Um... I don't know how many times she right. gave her pills, to be honest with you. I don't know. Okay. When I actually was aware of both of them again, mm -hmm. I said, I'm done looking around this place, it's time to go. Okay. Let's go down to Brusco. Okay. And that's really when I noticed the two of them again. Right. Because I was focused on finding that shit. So they get, she starts beating her at the door. From that point on, what happens? What is, what is Deanna's demeanor at that time and what is Crystal's demeanor at that time that they're that she's beating her at the door. 
Well, she did that because Deanna got all wacky and didn't want to leave. Right. So I think Crystal kind of stopped for a minute or two. I really do because she was like so quick. Right. That she hit her like a bunch of times really, really quick. Okay. And I didn't even realize what the hell was going on or even why. I mean, why would the girl be objecting to, you know, getting taken home? Right. But so what, were the, what were the extent of the injuries or whatever? Oh, it wasn't like, you know, she was harder that knocked her out or nothing. Although Byron's exact recounting of events is scattered, it is possible to make sense of it. When the conflict between Deanna and Crystal over the meth happened on either the 25th or 26th of December, Crystal knocked Deanna out with a pistol and also injected her with a lethal dose of morphine. But how did this result in the snoring sound that Byron mentions? When an individual suffers from head trauma or a morphine overdose, the brain stem is affected, which is responsible for controlling the respiratory tract. In Deanna's case, she unfortunately suffered from a deadly combination of both trauma and an overdose. This means that what Byron heard was not snoring, but most likely respiratory depression as Deanna was struggling to breathe. Luckily, forensic analysis already certified that the wounds on the back of Deanna's head were caused by pistol whipping, and detectives decide they need to confront Byron about it. Explain to me how Deanna's hair would have gotten one of your guns. I really can't. Unless what you were saying about those marks. Mm hmm If um, she did get hit with that. And how would that have happened? See, now it's the time not to cover for Crystal. I mean, it's time to do the No, I didn't come from my hands. No, no, no. I can tell you that. No, it's not. Uh, uh, right, you like I was saying, it had to have been from Crystal. Right, but I mean, this is stuff you know about. Like you hit herself. It had to have been from Crystal. Right. But no, I... Did it come from Crystal? Did she tell you? Nobody else. No. I guess we didn't talk about anything except we are supposed to say that when we got back, she wasn't there and the place was all flipped upside down. She's already already scared to go with Crystal for a reason. That's why she flips out. That's, that's kind of the way I was thinking about flipping out at the door. And then she was fine. And then she got by the door and we're ready to leave. And Deanna just fucking lost it. You know, when, when it should have been all just fine. You know, we're ready to go. You know, you should be happy. All this is getting behind you. We're, you down there and say, Mom, I know I was happy at that point. Like, get her the hell out of here. Hey, let me tell you something, right? You've been doing good this far, right? And I know from the get-go, um, you didn't want to come forward because you didn't want to implicate nobody because of loyalty, and I understand that. Okay, but right now, this is about Byron, right? And I do believe, okay, Byron, <coughs> that you, you saw Crystal do some of the stuff, okay? Now it's now. I think she did. Okay, did you see it? I know you did. But her hand moved so damn fast. What did she have in her hand? You, you, you saw I it. think she had the. I know, I know you saw it. 380 in her hand. Okay. It was dark and her hand was so fucking fast, I'd never seen anybody's hand go fucking fast, honestly. Right. But well, you saw that she had the 380 in her hand, right? It's your gun, you recognize it, correct? Well, it's not mine. It's my well, it's, it's your dad's gun, but you recognize it. Before, it. Yes. Okay. All right. So after she hit her with the gun over the head, what happened with the gun? Who who put the gun back in the safe? I would have guess. I would have had to have. Okay, that's fine. But, hey, hey, yeah, hey, I honestly don't. That's fine. Don't hey, look, hey, we're not here to get you in trouble because but, you're, hey, you know. No, I'm trying to. They know for what I've done, but what I don't know. So besides Crystal beating her with a gun in the back of the head, what else did she do that you saw? And why does she have that gun in the first place? Why did it ever go there? That I don't know. I may have had it sitting in the drawer next to the bed from the whole Coke County thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I really don't yeah. know. Because, but Something's I mean, I'm, happened before you guys leave. Something happened before you guys leave. Right. 
Yeah, I think she got dosed with the morphine. That's what I think happened. Well, the morphine's gonna make her crash, wouldn't it? I don't know what it would do when on top of as much dope as as Deanna had done. Or then if she hung out with Kevin before that, because Kevin had a decent amount of dope. I mean, it should have been. So she's on a Kevin, five thing. people for three days should have been just fine. Mm -hmm. And when I saw Kevin, he only had a tiny bit left. And even I said, what the hell, where did it all go? And she was just like, mm, burnt, you know, burnt her all up. And there's no way. Yeah, no way. Did anybody? Did Crystal give her the morphine before or after she hit her with a gun? Time before. Did she inject it in her or did she give it to her in the pill form? I honestly think she shot her up, but I do. So do we. Yeah. But did you see it? No. The circumstances surrounding Deanna's death have now become much more precise, and Byron's first hand testimony means that there is little room for doubt. However, this was only the beginning of their sickening actions. Right after Deanna lost consciousness, the couple bound her hands, gagged her, and duct taped her mouth in an attempt to transport the body to a barn owned by Byron's father located on Centralia Road in Brooksville. This was a remote location where they wished to dispose of the body. Again, back to where she's on the ground, five, you said five minutes goes by, you're talking to her. Did you guys move her from that location and put her somewhere? No, except from there to the car. So straight from the ground in front of the door to the car. What happened to the gun after Crystal hit the end of her head with him? I honestly can't answer that one with knowledge I, I don't know. When was the next time that you ever saw him? I, I really don't know. It is also during this conversation that Byron reveals that meth was not the only reason why things got heated between Crystal and Deanna. Did you hold Deanna down while Crystal was put in the syringe on her? No, she didn't need to be held down. Mm -hmm. I right? remember her hand being on her table. And I think it was the clear kitchen table. Is there anywhere we would find your DNA on Deanna anywhere? Just from her being with me. I mean, she, Crystal had her come in and to try and get her to sleep. She came in and laid down with me. You know, like, snuggled up. But, I mean, we didn't have sex or nothing. But she did come in and snuggle up and was in the bed mm -hmm. and you know, there was still clothes on and all that. Okay. Did did Crystal come in? Um maybe like a couple of times. And what was her but reaction? I mean, I, well she's the one that told her to go in there and lay down. But later on she was like, you know, you didn't crush her, did you? I said no. I don't want any part of that. And I, I don't know what the hell went through her. I guess she said, you better not. I said, I didn't fuck. I didn't even want her to come in there and lay down, except that you're the one who sent her ass in there. Where did the whole story about Crystal finding you in bed with her and her and, and with Deanna and Deanna being naked? Where did that all come from? I have no idea. No idea. Because there was only Crystal, me, and Deanna there. Well, except maybe when the other guy said, I don't remember when he got there or anything, but but no. Was there ever there a time that you saw her thing. naked and Crystal got upset or anything like that? No. Yeah, I do remember De Deanna like walked through the living room with like her shorts and like a bra on or something, Crystal told her to put a shirt on. The officer refers to a testimony that Kevin had provided to officers at the time of the arrest. Allegedly, 
Byron and Deanna were lying together in a bed naked before the fight over the meth occurred, which resulted in a heated argument between the three, especially Deanna and Crystal. This would also explain why the situation may have escalated when Crystal tried to comfort Deanna during her breakdown. Regardless of this, more details would begin to come to light about what was done with Deanna's body while she was being transported to the barn. Deanna over at the, to your dad's place. You go into the garage, and you're getting her, and getting uh, Deanna out of, out of the back of the seat. How does that whole thing go down? Describe that whole situation to me. Well, we had to carry her out the same way like we carried her in, but she was still, you know, basically like hardcore sleeping. You know, she wasn't going to be assisting us at all. So, did she, was she making any noises? Snoring. So she's just snoring? Yeah. Is she throwing up? Is oh, she no. purging? Anything like that? No. Did no. she ever do that? No. Not, not of that at all. That's why, I mean, I've seen people go through ODs before, and they do do that kind of stuff, or do the seizures, and there was none of that. That's why I figured, you know, and Crystal was right, or, you know, didn't dose her too hard, or, you know, because she didn't go through any of that. I said, when we left her, she was sweaty, but she was fine. I mean, she was breathing fine, you know, snoring, just fine. Like, she was sweaty, which is to be expected from that type of drugs, and I think Deanna had been up for days. But no, there was no convulsions, no spitting up, no nothing. What do you do with her when, when you pull her out of the car? Um, we put her on that in, inversion table, and then the blanket that I was telling you about, I covered her halfway up with it. But not, you know, putting her back here. And then turn the radio on, just way in case, you know, she started freaking out or something. Because that's a real quiet neighborhood over there. And then this way, we wouldn't attract as much attention, you know, driving out and in, because it was. Do you ever strapped into the inversion table? We had, um, yeah, since, um, since Crystal refused to fucking stay, uh, there was some duct tape there, so we just duct tape our hands, you, you know, like that, so that she wouldn't freak out, she was just laying there snoring. Mm -hmm. And I put the blanket over her, and then I looked at it, and the damn, it's like from here to there to the ground. So I just, we slid the table over like against like the toolbox. <clears throat> you know, so she kind of like roll off of it if she freaked out, and then I propped the end of it up so that it wouldn't inversion itself. Mm -hmm. But why, why duct tape her hands? Well, it just that if she woke up, she wouldn't freak out. So which one did you put duct tape in her mouth then, because she screams? Crystal did something with, um, just like a, not a paper towel and not a rag, but something of that nature. Well, because I wanted Crystal to stay there with it. Okay, well, exactly what did Crystal do to her mouth? Um, she put that, whatever it was, a little rag thing or whatever there. Where? And, like, not like in her mouth, like down her throat. Or, or it had to be in her mouth. Well, right, but I mean she didn't, you know. Show, she didn't show it down right. her throat. Right. And right. Did, she, did she put a tape over it to keep it in place? Yeah, yeah she did. Okay. I can tell you, I really wasn't cool with any of that mm -hmm. because Crystal should have fucking stayed there with it. Right. But she flat out fucking refused. She, nothing could have gotten her to stay there with it. Nothing. I don't understand why she would have done that. 
why she she would not stay there with her. I don't understand either. Instead, she's going to limit her breathing by throwing something in her mouth and put tape over it. No, Penny, Chris, Deanna was still snoring. I mean, she's still laying there snoring. Well, I'm not trying to make it sound any better. No, no. But she was, you know, her breathing was not. She could still breathe. I mean, she was so high. Right. Well, it's, well it, it sounds like you just down there like she's being held hostage or something. Well, no, I didn't want her to freak out and tear up the place or whatever like she did mm -hmm. there. What I really wanted was to stay there and watch her. Right, but she didn't do that though. No. So we're You know, to be honest with you, thinking about it on the ride back, I don't think, when I thought about it, I don't think I really wanted to leave Crystal with it. Why? But, I was but, just getting a weird vibe. Just a weird fucking vibe because she just totally protested. Like, no, no, I'm riding with you. I'm riding with you. I'm like, I'm only going to get mom and come right back. You know what I'm saying? She needs to be babysat. Right. No, no, I'm riding with you. I'm riding with you. So you, you, you duct tape her hands behind her? You duct tape her hands behind her back and then Chris was the one that posted right in her mouth and tape over it. I honestly don't remember if I did the hands or not. I think I did. Mm hmm but yeah, Crystal definitely took care of the mouth deal because I wasn't even thinking of that. Did you guys do the feet? Yeah. I don't remember doing the feet. But needless to say, she ain't going anywhere if she woke up. Well, I was hoping that she wasn't because, <clears throat> you know, we put this, see this is the American mm -hmm. This side of it against the wall, so she couldn't roll off and bang her head. Right. You know, that way? Right. So we only had to worry about her rolling off this way. And I think there was some like dresser or something of her, or another table at my dad's that came to put on that side. This way she could you know, roll off and hurt herself on the concrete. Right. How high did the inversions table sit? Mm -hmm. About as high as this? I'd say right as high as this. And then her head is facing down, or is it completely level? Oh, yeah. she's level, and her head is tied there. It's just like a sleeping person. The most tragic part of the situation is that there was a significant chance that Deanna could have been saved if EMS was called. Instead, this couple decided that the best course of action was to abandon her in a barn and duct tape her with a rag inside her mouth, which would obstruct her breathing even more. Anything else to to that you guys did and to keep her where she was at. Any robes or anything no. like that used? No. No, no, no. So it was just duct tape? Yeah. Yeah, and a blanket, which wasn't secured, but the blanket was over her, half over her. You know, when we found her body, she's got marks underneath her, underneath her throat that come up this way like she'd been strangled with something. Was there anything around her neck that maybe she, her moving around adjusted it no. to where it cut off? No. Did you see Crystal do anything to that effect when when they were when she was interrogating her? No. Did Crystal put anything around her neck to secure her down or anything like that? No. What would cause that? In I don't know. the situation you guys dealt with her, what would cause the bruising around her neck like that? Well, I mean, the way she, I don't know, the way she taped her wouldn't have done it either. Did she tape around her neck? No, she taped like this. I mean, I don't know how, I don't believe she went any lower than here. I don't remember seeing any lower than here. So, no, I can't think of what to do that. If she's taping around her head, how many wraps did she do? I honestly don't know. One and a half anyway. You know, one complete one or a little more, but at least. And she could have She didn't keep, like, you know, she didn't keep going and going and going. Right. But, but no, there's been nothing around her neck. You know, we brought the end down, and you know, it's for you to deal with. 
because I met her at your house, and you know, if you can find out what happened, find out what happened. If not, if not, but it's, you know, for you to deal with from here. What'd she say? I really don't know what she said except, you know, that's, that's fine, you know, I'll get her, you know, back home or wherever she needs to go or wherever she's staying. Or, I said, you know, I don't mind taking her there, but you're going to be there. This is for you to babysit. But we got there and she was there. So what happens? Where, did, where does she get prepared to be wrapped up and all that? Well, she right there on that right table? Right there, yeah. With materials already there, I'm sorry. Yeah. Who brought you the, or who got the, the black cloth stuff? I I really don't know. It had to have been right there somewhere. But who got it? I'm in who your got it? I honestly don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I really wasn't there. You know, at that moment, like physically, mentally there, I, I really wasn't. You know, we talked to Mama CJ. She says that she gave you all that black cloth, like 15 yards of black cloth. <laughs> so she just brought it with her when I, when me and Crystal picked her up. I'm trying to get to understand where it was. Has she ever given you a bunch of black cloth? <clears throat> no, one thing about Mama she did, she never really gives anybody anything. <laughs> it was like never. Of course, looking, her, looking, at her, <laughs> looking at her house, I can see that, but according yeah. to her, it's a totally different story. She's the giving lady. No. She's a humanitarian. No, definitely not. If you ever leave something over there, you can bet it's not going to be there. Somebody took it while you were gone, or this or that. just always been like that, but no, that's, that's just absurd. Everything was there, could be used. Why would she say that she gave you a bunch of cl black cloth? I have no idea. I don't have a clue. Did you, you know those black curtains that we took from your house? Yeah. Is that going to match all up to the stuff that she was wrapping? Is it the same material? No. No, those are actually curtains. That you I don't buy know. at a store? Well, I mean, they had this, you know, the sewing thing to be curtains. Did you make those or did somebody else? They were already made. So Mama said no, they gave you that to no. give you all that stuff to do that. <coughs> no, there's nothing to my knowledge at my house or that's ever been given to me by Mama CJ. So what's the rest of that material then? That was all of it. Mm. That was it all. That's why we actually had to to wrap her because that was all that was there, and it, you know didn't go around enough. Or we used what we had right there. So that's why you use the wires. Yeah, just to keep the material on there. What kind of wire is that? Safety wire, I guess they call it. What's it used for? Um, just for pretty much anything in construction trades. You know, for hanging wire, like it's probably what's hanging these ceiling tile things that go across. Like the drop ceiling? Yeah, stuff like that, or you know, it's got a million and one uses. Or if your muffler's falling down, you can tie it back up. It's kind of like a duct tape. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. And how about the straps? Where those come from? They were all right there. Every, everything was right there. None of this was like, you know, brought and planned. It was all stuff that was right there. And the zip ties? Yeah, it was all right there. Was it, did it come out of that big plastic bin? Or did it come out of somewhere else? 
I think the big plastic bag, because I think that that's, please, she popped it up with the zip ties, but I know that she didn't bring it with her. So. So you never her. mess with the zip ties? No. It was all crystal? Yeah, it was all crystal thing, because, you know, I'm familiar with zip ties. And that was not my choice. There's, as far as if there's a roll of wire wicker or zip ties. You know, it's definitely not going to be the zip ties. Did Mama CJ touch that cloth or touch Deanna or help you guys in that thing at all? Not that I can remember. No, she was pretty much useless except for giving orders. So who all took part in wrapping up the animal? Just me and Crystal. Well, now I see it from that view too. What view? Or she's standing there doing nothing but telling what to do. But directly now. us talking and being right there with a dead body. I mean, that, that life is gone, you know? Right. And it's almost like, you know, discarded material at that point. You know, I can understand, I know what, why you think you sound evil because that was once a person, but it was not. Yeah, she wasn't there anymore. Right. No, she wasn't in there. And I, I know that. And I can, I can internalize that and understand why it's, it's, a, it's easier to disassociate that as being a person anymore because it's it's not it's lost its life you know so its energy was gone you doing those things and, and her being in the trunk is is perfectly understandable I mean because it be it I mean it's perfectly understandable in the sense of at the moment I did understand it like that yeah. like it was just something that needed to be done I mean, but looking back on it now it looks pretty fucking bad. I don't even know how I was able to do that. By the evening of December 26th, Byron and Crystal returned to the barn to find Deanna deceased. This is when they wrapped her body up in the black bag and drove for nearly two days with the body in their car's trunk before approaching Kevin for help in Floral City, the same man who reported the two to be the culprits. According to police reports, Kevin believed the two to be joking and provided them directions to a remote location known as Kroom Rydal Road. A month later, Deanna's partially skeletonized body was found. All the puzzle pieces fit together at this point in Byron's interrogation, even with his sly attempts to hide details. The only thing left to do is for a senior detective to pressure Byron and get him to admit to his crimes. Now, from the whole legal aspect of what I gotta work with here, uh, let me tell you what I don't like, okay? And I need you to clear it up for me. Uh, because like I said, your credibility is paramount in this, okay? And this is one of the most, most important 
conversations you'll have. The way I paint this is you can't find your crap, your stuff. Okay. Listen to me. Let me finish. No, you didn't. <coughs> well, even that, even the stem. Well, well okay. whatever. Like anyway, it. people are angry. This is what it looks like from the outside. Okay? People are angry. And all of a sudden, she ends up, before it's over with, after she leaves, she gets her ass beat. She gets injected with, with some dope. Okay? She gets restrained. She gets put in the car. Okay? Unconscious, supposedly, and driven to town. Driven, uh, driven back to your dad's? Brooksville. Brooksville, okay? Well, on the outside, looking in, and we have to trade seats for a second. Right. I want you to listen to me telling this story, okay? And the bottom line is, she gets accused, she gets accused, and it gets people mad enough that they beat her ass over it, okay? So, quite angry over it, which is what normal people do over drugs, because I've seen case after case after case over this. Because you might as well be stealing my money or something else when you steal my drugs. It's just, it pisses us off. You know, it just does. So that happens. She gets beat with a gun, coming out of your safe. That's another thing, okay? Comes out of your safe, yet you don't know how Crystal got it, yet you're afraid of Crystal, okay? You're afraid of Crystal, but yet you sit there and watch her beat with the gun, and yet you don't know where the gun and how it got back. And you've got what I, what I call and what attorneys down the road call convenient memory loss, okay? So I need to clear that up because that's a legitimate concern, a serious concern, right. okay? And I'm gonna tell you what I think happened after listening to you. And I'm gonna tell you what I developed at, okay? I developed that yes, it happened. Yes, somebody got mad. And yes, maybe Crystal really got carried away. And got, it got out of hand. And I believe that it's like, oh, sh crap. You panic then and go, holy crap, here she is. What do we do with her? Okay? Well, the only reason Mama CJ would take all her stuff, in my opinion, as a common, reasonable, prudent person, if you're going to sell this story to me, is if, especially if she ain't got nothing on but a pair of short underdoors, okay, is if she's either already dead or totally unconscious. And how that happens doesn't matter because that's gonna be determined by the medical examiners as far as the cause and manner and so forth. And they know that, and I'll be honest with you, the two detectives that were in here, they know a hell of a lot more than they told you. Oh, I understand. Okay, because that's what we do. Right. Okay, that's what we do. Because if we tell you and you regurgitate it back to us, it means absolutely nothing. Right. That doesn't get any credibility for you. Okay, the only thing that gets credibility for you is if you tell me. And then I can match it up and go, okay, this is, you know they've been in your house. Right. You know you've watched enough CSI and 48 Hours and, and all of that crap on TV. You know what they can do today. Mm -hmm. Okay, they love to play stupid <clears throat> because they don't want you to know what they know. Right. Okay, <clears throat> but I have to look at this from a different so I'm going to tell you a little bit, but I'm not going to tell you enough that it's going to hurt your credibility. I'm going to tell you they know more than what, what, what they're telling you. Okay? So with that being said, I need to try and build your credibility because I just, I need to get, all I can work with here is the truth. Correct. Okay? Anything else, anything else just poisons everything. Okay? The truth and the truth and the truth. That's all I can work with. So let's go back. Here she is. She's at yours. She's gotten beat up. How did the gun get out of the safe? Let's we'll start there. Okay. How did the gun get out of the safe? It wasn't in the safe at that moment. Okay. Where was the gun? It had been probably in the little drawer next to the bed. Okay. How did Crystal, who you're not intimate with, who's not in your bedroom, who's just an occasional friend, how does she know your gun is in the drawer in your bedroom? Because she knew that just from me keeping it there. She used to stay with her boyfriend at my house in the past. You're not sleeping with her? How I know does she I'm know not. your gun's in her? in here. You know what I'm saying? That's a question you're going to have right. to ask later. And don't don't get mad at the messenger. No, okay? no, and I'll be honest with you, my place is very, very sparsely furnished. Okay. Or, because okay. I hadn't even planned on staying there. So you went to my bedroom and there's a bed and there's a little dresser on each side. Look okay. this big. So Crystal, no knows, Crystal knows the gun is there. Yeah. Okay. So Crystal gets the gun. 
some way. Okay, and I'm sure it's typical because I've been there. I've seen a dozens and dozens of cases that I worked, and I watched enough TV myself. Okay, it's like, bitch, you took my shit. I'm okay if you don't tell me where it is. I want to know where my shit is. I know how that works. That's how the game works. That's what we do. That's what, and I'm sure that's what happened here. Okay, why you're stepping aside around that destroys your credibility. I didn't see. Okay, okay. What do you mean? I didn't see any of that, and I. You went to the point, and I'm not saying you. Crystal went to the point to beat her, close to flipping gap. When you start beating somebody, that was a long time after that. When you start, eventually it got there though. That's what I'm talking about. I'm screw the time frame. I don't care. I'm in the fast forward mode. Okay, I'm all the way to where the altercation is going on now. I'm where the oh, gun okay. came out and it's, right. and it's, bitch, where's my stuff and all this kind of stuff. And eventually she ends up beating her with it, correct? Mm -hmm. She beat her with it, yes, but it didn't come out like that. We're on the way out of the house. Okay, how did she beat her with it? Then? I guess she had it in her back pocket or in her hand. I really don't know. I just mm -hmm. saw it come up and hit Dan in the back of the head. Okay. So it wasn't he, held against her. So did he have to go to the floor then? After about a bunch of quick hits, yeah. Okay. Is Deanna on the floor screaming then, or is she out? She was squealing a little bit. Okay. And then Crystal, you know, held her hand. Over her right there just to stop her from squealing. Okay. Then right. did you help pick her up, put her on the couch, or what? No, she didn't go onto the couch from there. She okay. stayed right there on the floor. Okay. What did y'all do to her on the floor then? Nothing. Okay. I, I what did you do? With her and what I did talked you do? to her. I told her, you know, we're just going to take you back down to Brooks, so I'll bring you over to Mama's. You know, all we got to do is get in the car and go for a ride to Brooks. So all's well. Go we'll let's go bake cookies. Well, that's all we'll we stop by do. Dunkin' Donuts, get some chocolate milk. You know, I mean, that's the way you're coming across. It makes no sense. I that's just, what I'm trying to tell you, Barney. Makes no sense. I wasn't upset about the dough. Okay. Yeah, well, I Chris think, might have been upset about the dough, but I wasn't. Let I me give a fuck about the dough. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what you're doing here. Okay. But, and and please don't get mad at me. No, no, but this is the truth. I'm telling please, you the truth. Please don't get mad at me. I know okay? I'm not. Okay. I, and I told you when I walked in here, I don't know all the facts. Okay. Okay. Please, I don't. Right. Okay. I'm not the investigators. I'm looking at this through a neutral set of eyes. That's why I'm here. Okay. So when I sat here and look at this, I'm going, it stinks. There's no way I couldn't. I could not sell that to a third grader. Come on now. Okay, this 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 just ain't gonna fly. This ain't gonna it doesn't pass the smell test. You know? And if you were listening to me, you'd go, I don't believe damn we're just like right, right, it's because you okay. don't understand. You what haven't you been in in the drug world and you don't understand my point of view. But no matter how long a pile of dope you have, it's always gonna be gone. How do you think I am? Well what I say is I don't care about dope. Okay. I really don't. I'm fifty six years old, okay? I've done this crap for a long time. And when you talk about understanding, you know what? My job has been to put myself in your position. Okay? That's the only way I've been able to effectively do my job. And you know what? I'm going to be retiring in a few months. You know what? I'm damn good at what I do. I can put myself in your position. And yes, I do know the drug business. But I didn't lose anything. Okay? Well, outside of that, okay? Outside of that. Let's just go back to the normal way you would look at this, okay? All of a sudden, a girl who you don't trust, who you are actually afraid of, who shouldn't have your gun, pulls your gun out of her back pocket and beats this girl in the head with it, and now all of a sudden, that's your gun that just beat this. You're not concerned about that? You're not like, holy crap, girl, what are you doing? Yeah, I was. Here? I would be absolutely wet in my pants. I was. That's why I stopped her from repeatedly hitting her. Clearly, Byron begins to crack, which is why you see him lying about stopping Crystal and getting progressively anxious. Fortunately, this would only be the start of us seeing his alibi shatter into pieces. Some of the stuff you're holding back, you're afraid because it makes you look guilty. The truth will probably work just fine, but right now, you're afraid of the truth, and you're afraid to tell the truth. Okay? They will connect all of these dots. Your credibility is paramount. Okay? I need you to connect those dots. Okay, right. you need to get up here in front. Plain and simply, when this beating took place, 
Well, CJ didn't go there and take all her stuff and leave with it unless she was totally incapacitated. That's the only way that could have happened. That's exactly what I'm sure she's going to say. Okay, that's There's the only way that could have happened. She was there. Well, that, I'm, just asking. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. All my stories are verified. Okay? None of this is a lie. I've wanted to go forward with this for a long time okay. since the start of this shit, but it involved other people, okay. so I didn't come forward with it. What do you mean it involved other people? It involved Mitchell, it involved Mama CJ. Okay. All right. And I couldn't confess my part well, without involving them in their parts. Okay. And that's where I had the problem. All right. And again, but buddy was you're getting agitated, agitated with me. Well, no, because I hate being told that I'm telling a lie when I'm straight out telling the fucking truth. Did I walk in here and tell you I don't know anything about this case hardly, except what I've been listening to? Wait, but been... I'm telling you what it appears. Right, I understand. Okay? Please understand that. I am not telling you point blank your life. Right, I understand I'm gonna, how it is. I'm going to let you decide what's the truth or not, because that's where your credibility comes into issue. Okay, that's where, understand this, there's two people there. There's Crystal, there's you. Okay. You're telling a chain of events that, you know what? Well, let me ask you this. There's two people, okay? Correct? Two people there. Two people there. You're talking. Two people there. She's, and now Deanna is dead, correct? Yes? No. Not at the house. She is not dead. I didn't ask you that, okay? You Currently, right now, today, oh, yeah, yeah. she's dead, yeah, okay? She let me ask you something. There's two people who had any, any, any interaction with her, okay? Intentionally, unintentionally, I don't care. Okay? There's two people. Okay? One of them caused her death. Intentionally or unintentionally? Don't know. But one of them caused her death. Which one did? Which one did? You or Crystal? It was not me. Okay? Well, then are you saying it's Crystal by default? Is that what you're saying? If it was within any earthly person's control, yes. Okay. Therefore, I'm sure that when it comes right down to it, especially when Crystal, because she will one day, she'll hear what all you said in here today. Right, I'm not okay? saying When this comes forth, and with Mama CJ, and everybody looks, okay, all of a sudden, who do I believe now? Am I going to believe Crystal, or am I going to believe you? And unfortunately, I'm sitting here as a neutral party. I'm not the investigator in this case. I'm just sitting here looking at it and saying, what kind of credibility I got in this guy? Right, I understand. And I'm sitting here looking now, I'm listening to this story, and I'm going, holy crap, that dog don't hunt. That makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, it makes no sense. Okay, as this as I know it, and if you can't convince me, I think down the road you're going to have a hard time convincing other people. You say you want to know what I think? Because it's good for you, and I totally agree with that. Please, again, don't get mad at the messenger. I get to go home tonight either way. I'm not here. I don't have a dog in this fight. Right. Okay? I'm not here. I don't win a microwave oven if you get time in jail. It doesn't matter to me. I'm this close to retiring. I'm not trying to make lieutenant, captain, or sheriff. Okay? I'm done. That's not what this is about. But what I am about, though, is you know what, I made a long time ago, in my career I put a lot of people in jail. And a lot of people who deserve to go to jail. But sometimes, you know, I can't work when it's not the truth. And something about this, you look, if you're not guilty of some of these things, you've painted yourself where you look three times guilty. You know, based upon the way this damn story is, and you can say it can be verified and all of that stuff, I, it's just the way it looks. I understand how it looks. You know, if we traded chairs, I understand. Your your dope goes missing. She comes over there. She's did you have somebody come over and take all her clothes and stuff out of there? She's beat with your gun and stuff that you didn't even know that she has. She's there. You take her, and then to top it all off, you're the one going to dispose the body to hide this whole thing so that it doesn't happen. Okay? It ain't Crystal out there disposing of the body. I know. A normal reasonable person would go, you know what? Crystal ain't doing it because she ain't got nothing to hide. Because she ain't afraid. She didn't do nothing. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. You're telling you. When you add this up in its totality, okay, I do you smell what you're, I mean, do you smell what you're shoveling? Come on. Yes, but it's the truth. You know? Honestly, it's the truth. Well. And it all point could mean I knew it all did at the beginning. 
and it's always going to look that way. But anything I say can be verified with people yeah, that were yeah, there at the moment. Yeah, well, Any, anything I've said. Forensic evidence and is going to be the, up to. Is gonna be the, uh, the biggie here. And I'm not even going to go down that, that avenue because I'm not going to sit in here and try to tell you that I know this and I know that. But I am going to tell you this. I know human nature. Okay? And let me tell you something. And I'm going to tell you point blank and get mad at me if you will. I don't know you. So it ain't personal. Okay? Right. It's purely professional. So, you know, when this is all said and done, however long it is, is down the road, if, if I ever saw you somewhere else, dude, I'd buy you a cup of coffee. Wouldn't buy you a drink, but that's because I quit drinking many years ago. But, so it's not personal. And understand that. All right. But you're lying. I don't know how else to say that. Okay? This whole chain of events... All you're trying to do is you're like the guy who saw his, who said, I've never seen my daughter naked. You're trying to back up off the whole culpability of it to make you look less culpable, to make you look like you had less to do with this. This is what it looks like to me, dude. I and we traded chairs. You thought the same thing. You're like, yeah, it does. It does. You tell me. Why would you dispose of a body? Why would you dispose of a body? Why would you dispose of a body? Why would you dispose of a body that you have nothing to do with? With this, Byron's last resort is to take the blame off himself and pin everything on Crystal instead. I wasn't, I didn't kill her. I shouldn't be freaking getting rid of the body. This is her deal. I think I'm helping her out, you know, by okay. doing what the hell she says. She knows what to do. This is her thing. This ain't my line of work. This ain't my fucking deal. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So you ride around with her for two days. That's what it ended up being, yes. You weren't worried about getting pulled over? Stopped? And... I'll be honest with you, I was praying for it. You were praying for it? I really was. Okay, why didn't you just drive right here into the parking lot? Because it wasn't just me involved. You know. It was not just me involved. Okay. Well. My own ass, I'll take the rap for what I It's 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 kind of time for me to, to, <coughs> to go out of here. Listen okay. to that. Okay. The two issues that I think are big here, okay, number one is the gun. It's a very big issue, okay. It's generally in a lock safe. It's generally, it's yours. It's with a woman who doesn't, you're not sleeping with her, how she would know where it is or what have you. And when we talk about the gun, how it appeared, how she hit her and all of that stuff, you're very vague. Your details go to nothing. Okay, which I'm telling you as somebody looking from the outside, don't get mad at me, I'm not calling you a liar. Okay, I'm just telling you what I think. And okay. what I think is, I think you had the gun, I think you hit her. That's what I think. Just because of the vagueness of that story, don't get mad at me. These are, are what, did you ever see the TV show Lie to Me? Well, okay. Anyway, it explores the science of being able to tell, it's called kinesis of somebody's Bodies, language, the way they uh, speak, the way their body moves, the involuntary actions, the things they do with their eyes, different things when they're not telling the truth. You display those, okay? And that's what I've been sitting in here looking at when I read all of this. So I think the gun is an issue. I'm just telling you what I think. I'm going to get up and walk out of here because I'm not going to debate this with you because I want you mad at me. I think this whole story, when it came time about taping her up and stuff when you were over there or what have you. I truly believe she was alive when she left your house. I do believe that. Okay? So I'm not going to go there. I believe that part. I don't want you to know that. But the part about tying her up and, and then untying her, I mean, taping her up when you're over at your dad's house and then untaping her before you wrap her up and what have you, no, that one's not there either. Okay? So all of these little bitty issues, your story in all of this has been, you know what? This all happened. Yeah, I did everything. My gun, my house, my car, that, which was my dad's that I had access to, which makes it my car. I did all of this stuff, and even I got rid of the body. I did it all, but yet it's somebody else's fault. That's the tale that you're telling. And that's, that's why I was trying to get in here and get some credibility, because your integrity and credibility in that is going to be paramount because that's a tough story to sell. That I agree, but I lost nothing and I had nothing to gain. So, so you're saying you just gave it a shot? 
Mm -hmm. No, no, what I'm saying is I didn't lose anything, and I had nothing to gain from her dying. That's what I'm right. trying to tell you. And that's why I had everything to lose from her dying. That's why I don't think it was intentional. Nobody does. Nobody does. I don't think you guys do, do you? No. I didn't, I didn't think it was intentional until it, I was and told about the excessive dosage. Now, there's no doubt. Okay, the excessive dosage, who, it was fucking Who intentional. told you about the excessive dosage? Who told you about the excessive dosage? The detective ball told me there was an excessive amount of morphine in her system. Okay, well, I, I... But for someone who would know what they were, were doing around morphine, that yes, there was an excessive amount for someone who wasn't used to it. Okay. Okay. Which well, makes me believe that it was intentional because she knew what the hell one pill did or what fifty pills did. Well, I want to. It was intentional. I want to leave this room with a clear conscience and a clear air between the two of you, of us. Because yeah, I'm gonna retire, dude. There's one day I'm gonna be standing in that convenience store and you might come tripping in there. Yeah, you know. Go, huh? And when you see me. I want you to go, yeah, well, he, at least he was straight with me. You know what? I mean, the bottom line is this, okay? Just exactly what I told you. Your house, your dope, your gun, your everything, your car she got transported over, your duct tape, your thing, your stuff she got wrapped up in, and everything about it as you say it, right up to the time you dump her body, all of this stuff is you. I, I and know. yet you're saying, okay, this is Crystal, and I'm doing this on the orders of Mama CK. Okay, that is a very tough pill to swallow and say you were innocent on it. I know Mama CJ, I know Crystal, they were both this deep. Don't get me wrong, I know that. Okay, but you share some responsibility here. I'm and that's where I you're going. I know, I know, I know you do. Okay, and with that, I, I have no hard feelings for you. Yeah. I, I yeah. have no remorse. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I and know. I didn't want to leave her, but please understand something, okay? I know it doesn't work. Yeah. 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 And. From what I'm saying this is. Statement, to make this look statement. This statement. I'm getting you know, This statement is not official till it's over. Okay? There's a few things you could change here. Only tell the truth. There's a few things you could change here that could give you some credibility. And you know what? It's what you said earlier, okay? If it doesn't make a difference, then why not get the credibility? Okay? That's all I'm saying. But don't tell him anything but the truth. Okay? He knows the case. I've done. I'm going to walk out of here. All right. But thank you. And uh, for Thanks your time. So. Going home. I'm a, that's mine, right? Yeah. So. Ultimately, Every single piece of evidence pointed towards Byron and Crystal being accomplices in a murder. Byron went on to be charged with second-degree murder and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, as his DNA was found on the firearm used to assault Deanna. Crystal, on the other hand, was also charged with second-degree murder for her direct involvement in the murder of Deanna Styers. But no matter the severity of their charges, Deanna's family was left with nothing but remorse and guilt for a fate they could have changed. We got a knock on the door, and it was two detectives. We didn't think that we were going to be told, like, we found a body. It didn't feel real. There's no way it's her, but that was just me fighting, like, my worst fear. My heart just broke. I never had to go through anything so painful. Knowing that she's not coming back, think that anything like this can happen to you or your loved ones until it does. It happened to me, and I never thought in a million years I'd be experiencing anything like this. You always see it on TV or criminals, but it's happened to my baby. No. Make sure you always check on your loved ones. Tragically, this experience would only become even more traumatic for the family. While Byron was sentenced to life by a jury in Florida within the same year that Deanna was found, the story was much different for Crystal. She was only sentenced four years later, in 2017, when she was given 12 years as part of a plea deal. To add insult to injury, she was already released by October 2023 and now lives her life as a free woman. For Deanna's family and friends, this was shocking 
as her mother and sister expressed. Because Crystal was the one who injected Deanna with the morphine and also pistol whipped her repeatedly, do you think this sentence is fair? Yes or no? Let me know down in the comments.